everyone, it's Sharonda from Hair Weight, and today I'm going to be reviewing and recapping Power Book 2 Ghost Season 3, Episode 5, No Second Chances. So, I'm very excited about this episode because I feel like we're going in a good direction. I feel like we're just going up. Every episode gets better and better and better. I'm even let that one episode that y'all was just on some random stuff, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it slide, okay, because we're going in a new direction for the rest of the season. So, let's start with Jenny because... Jenny and Sax, they just had a lot going on. And I just felt like it was a bit much. Like, Sax was doing a lot this episode, okay? That I just, he's always doing a lot. But it was just, it was so melodramatic. I was just like, I wanted him to be like, pick me, choose me. But Sax, Jenny, and Blanca, they're having a drink because they're doing a toast because Whitman is dead. And I was just like, as much smack as y'all talked about him, now y'all want to be sitting up here having a drink for him. It just wasn't making sense for me. And then Jenny wants to do this speech like, my story is BS and we got to make sure that we figure this out and figure what he was on to so we don't end up like him. And I was just like, well, a couple of y'all can end up like him. I don't condone violence, but I'm just saying that some people had to get the axe. It would probably be a couple of y'all. So Blanca shows Jenny um, a picture of like the dead Russian connect that Tariq had to take out, even though it's supposed to be Brayden, who was a huge weak link, but I'm going to get to that a little bit later. Um, she shows that like she makes a connection that they took the Tejadas took him out, even though it wasn't, but it kind of was. The Tejadas took him out in order to become the Castillos Connect. But what they're really trying to figure out is where are they actually getting the drugs for from? Where who is their distro? So that's what they're trying to figure out. But in the midst of all of this, like Sax is doing a lot. Like my man's was following Jenny. He called her. He's sitting outside looking like. I know she better answer this phone. She answered the phone. She kept sending him the voicemail saying that she was busy doing stuff. So, Sax ends up finding a constitutional violation in Davis's brother's case. And so, it pretty much seems like he's going to get his brother out. He's going to earn Davis's trust. Davis is very terrible about being discreet. Like, it truly doesn't make sense to me that somebody like Davis, who has murdered someone, wouldn't understand like deals with drug dealers deals with dangerous people and that you just wouldn't understand the importance of discretion as a lawyer you're sitting up here looking at files hurrying up and putting stuff in your desk and showing people where you keep your key it just didn't make sense to me and i just <sighs> do y'all feel like david's gonna make it this season because i feel like if monet finds out that sax is on to them because of what he found from davis like, I feel like Monet, we clearly know at this point, she's not afraid of tying up loose ends and getting rid of whoever can, you know, point back to her. But I don't know. It just doesn't make sense for a character like Davis to be making these sloppy mistakes that he does, especially in front of somebody like Sax. You can't tell me that Sax is, like, smarter and more intelligent than somebody like Davis. That is, it don't even make sense to me. So that's besides the point. So he texts Jenny, like, I got some info, and she's ignoring him. So he goes stop this girl waiting outside waiting for her at the door okay she walks out he calls her she doesn't answer so he follows her so they end up going following her to the place where she's been keeping lauren and then it's this whole thing like sex was really bold to even get out of the car go to the front door like jenny knows i'm here and then for her to come out and then he was like you lied to me like what are you hiding from me like this was this was just like there was no feelings involved like this didn't mean something to you I was like, Sax, like, you really doing all of this? You clearly see it's like some type of security outside. Like, why would your mind just jump to her smashing somebody else, getting her black blown out, back blown out by somebody else? It just didn't make sense. It just felt like, why are we being melodramatic? Like, we're stuck inside of a rom-com when it's really, like, power. And it just, I was like, no. So, Laura ends up walking out. And then he was like, oh, you made me believe she was dead. And then he was like, she's using you, Lauren, which it doesn't make sense that Sax would really jeopardize the entire case because his girl made him feel less than. That just didn't make sense to me. Then Lauren talking about like, is he, is he telling the truth? Like, are you lying to me? And then it becomes this whole thing. He was like, Tariq would never leave you. He loves you. I saw how he reacted when he found out you were dead. And then I was just like, child, Sax didn't really just mess up your whole entire case because he is in his feelings that you don't be rocking with him like that. Like, this is why I say sex gotta go. He gotta go. He literally just, he messed up her entire case. Like, this is blowing her case wide open. Everybody knows. We see what happens when Laura has that conversation with Tariq, but I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later. But I just felt like sex was doing a lot. 
nothing really happened with Kane this episode outside of, you know, him having a conversation with Lorenzo about his interaction with Monet and her asking questions about IG and her international guap before, it, like, the night of Zeke's murder. So he just tells Lorenzo, like, I think you should just, like, be a man and just tell her straight up what happened because she's going to find out. Drew, him and Gordo, they getting their little thing gone, getting their backs blown out. And then he gets a phone, Gordo gets a phone call, and he's like, I got to go. And so he's just like, what's going on? He tells him that the dudes that they got into a shootout with, one of the dudes survived, and he's actually a CI. And so then Drew kind of questions because, you know, their dad got killed because he was a snitch. And so he was just like, how you didn't know he was a CI, but this is your connect for guns? Like, that just doesn't make sense to me. So he's like, hey, it's not like that. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not no snitch. And so Drew says, okay, well, I'm going to go with you to help take care of this because this can, like, blow back on all of us. So they go to the hospital. And then as they're trying to, like, go take care of him and kill him, baby, everybody in there. You see all them ATF jackets? Like, one nobody finna get to this man. So they hide down the Sarah world when they see one of the ATF agents goes to Blanca uh, from the DEA and basically tells her that he didn't make it. Um, I'm sorry. But he had his phone in his wallet that was recovered. It was on him when they found him. So she's trying to go get the phone. So they beat her to it and they pay off the nurse. And um, they gave her a nice little wad of cash. So Blanca goes to get it. And the lady's like, oh, his family already came and picked it up. She's looking like, Beach, now you know his damn family wasn't here. And she's looking like, mm, I don't know what to do. Let me just go back to doing my stuff. And so Blanca was looking like she was upset. But they looked at the pictures on the phone. They decided they had the pictures of Brayton, of Lorenzo, of the car that would have implicated everybody. So they deleted the pictures, destroyed the phone, tore up the sim, threw it in the sewer. So we'll see what happens with that. But I am really interested to see, because of what Gordo does at the end of this week's episode, what happens when Drew actually finds out that it was Gordo? Like, what's going to happen? I can't wait to see how that plays out. But in the midst of all of this, let's just go ahead and talk about Tariq. So this week's episode is about no second chances. And I like how, you know, they always have their class discussion when they're saying, you know, America is the land of the it's the land of rebirth, redemption, and reinvention. That's the topic of their discussion. Of course, Tate Raggedy behind, who has reinvented himself many times as he's getting into his little wars with his adversaries. And so I love that they have this discussion about are you worthy of a second chance? Like, and I like how we see, you know, the partnership between RSJ and Tariq and how, you know, the sins of their father kind of kind of almost defined their life before it even started. And so how Tariq feels like you should get a second chance, like him getting this money is a second chance at being able to create the family unit that he felt like his father failed at doing. So I think it's really interesting how they like men, how they interweave the class discussions into what the overall Archie episode is about. So Monet texts him in class and basically says, I need you to find out where IG was the night that Zeke was murdered. So in order for Tariq to get this information, he goes to Tate and tells Tate that he has some information that they can give, that he can give to the feds, saying that the streets are saying that IG was the one responsible because he knew that Blanca and Jenny would basically go and try to figure out the alibi if it matched up and he would get the information. So Tate tells him, you are MS and lie. He was in DR, like he had said before he was murdered. So he couldn't have killed Zeke. So in the midst of all of this, um, we see that they're having this meeting with RSJ. And I was really confused for a moment because I was like, so how Brayden can go on a trip for RSJ, but you're saying that Tariq is too junior to do so. This is what his uncle Lucas was saying. So I was gl glad that RSJ gagged him and was like, well, okay, well, Tariq wasn't too junior to get my business. And also, too, at the end of the day, Tariq is the only person in here that actually speaks Italian. So wouldn't you feel like his presence will be the best person here since can't none of y'all speak Italian in the first place? Have it make sense for me. I really love how RSJ goes to bat for him. I like how he put Lucas in this place and was like, and you know what, Lucas, actually, we don't need you. I think me and the junior team can get this job done. So I just like how he keeps going to bat for him. But also, too, Brayden, why don't you be speaking up for him? Like, you be talking smack any other time your daddy be getting on you. You still be talking smack. So why do you be so quiet when Lucas definitely be treating Tariq different? I just don't like Brayden this season. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I'm not feeling Brayden. I think he's the weakest link of them all. I think he always gets them in trouble. I think he's not really about this life. 
And he just been doing a lot of sneaky stuff towards Tariq behind his back that just, it doesn't sit well in my spirit, okay? But um, then after all of this, he gets Tariq to go. Tariq's like, oh, I'm supposed to spend the weekend with my girlfriend. Like, I'm sure you love Effie, okay? But you gonna give up a free trip to Milan? Like, huh? But I was happy that RSJ said, bring your little girlfriend. Like, don't nobody care. Come on, like, why did you even have to talk? Why did somebody even have to talk to you into going to Milan? Like, I would be like, bye, Effie. I'll see you next weekend, okay? So we see that, um, <laughs> we see that Tariq ends up with Monet. He gives her the information about what happened with IG. So there's no way that he could have killed Zeke, which she's already been thinking that. She knows that Lorenzo has something to do with this. So whoever was a part of, I know the budget might not be high, but whoever's in charge of making us believe that they were in Milan and y'all did that random backdrop in the conference room, y'all not seeing heaven for that because that just looks so fake. But I'm going to go, okay? Y'all going to lie Italy. Okay. So we see that I love how in this conversation that I love watching RSJ do his negotiation skills. At first they came in asking for 10%, but then he brings up the whole patent information um, that Effie's teacher had mentioned about the robotics um, patent that they're trying to get. I love how they like showcase and utilize the information that they learn in the classroom in order to help them in real life business decisions. And so they took that 10% to 20% and they were able to basically close the deal. So I thought it was crazy, like when Effie was like, this is our first date. And I was like, y'all been selling drugs. <clears throat> I was like, y'all been selling drugs this whole time. Like Tariq didn't have time to go buy a car. Like y'all had time to do a lot of different things. And this your first date? Like, have it make sense for me. So they talk about, oh, it's just so nice to be able to breathe. And I was like, y'all act like y'all been working 40 hour work weeks, okay? Like y'all just, y'all just. You know what? Y'all got your own business, whether it's legitimate or not. I know that it's a lie. So I'm going to go ahead and let that slide. So we see that um, Noma ends up popping up on them. And I was like, oh, it's nice to finally see Noma four episodes later. Like, I've been wondering where you were. All right. So she pop up like, I know y'all bitches didn't think that y'all was going to come up here in Milan and like not tell me. And like, I wasn't going to pop up on y'all. So she tells them that they need to go to Francisco, Francesco's. Lombardi's house and they need to take this bug that Mecca planted without anyone finding out and so basically they end up having to go to this party to reconvince RSJ and that's how that's their cover to get into the party now this is where I got highly annoyed okay so Brayden first of all Brayden messed up a lot this episode when Brayden was in the airport before they got on the plane he dropped his phone, Kiki found his phone, and saw all of the little crash coin deposits. I truly don't understand what Kiki sees in Brayden, and I still don't believe this relationship, but at least this is slightly more believable than Diana and Celine, so I'm just gonna let this go for now. So she ends, they end up going to the party. Brayden ends up going to the room with Effie. They're trying to figure out where the bug is while Tariq is talking to RSJ. The security guard finds Brayden, of course, after he finds the bug, but he ends up getting carried away. Effie ends up going to get the bug and then a security guard comes in, but she's a woman and she fine as hell. So she was able to like, you know, she was able to get away with it. All right. And had to do take her to Francesco's uh, private collection. So what annoyed me about Brayden is Brayden's getting tortured and beaten. And I see you, you've been in the gym, Brayden, I see you. But they're torturing Brayden, uh, Brayden asking who he works for. And I just felt like you get kidnapped. You drop your phone that's to y'all secret business that shouldn't tie back to y'all kiki finds that you drop you drop your phone then you have the bug you get caught then they had to come up with this whole plan in order to get brayden back i just feel like brayden is the weakest link you can't kill nobody you're not about this life you make dumb decisions like you know them people who like book smart but they ain't got no common sense like that is brayden and that's why i feel like brayden should not survive past the season it just doesn't make sense to me I think that he brings nothing to the table. He brings great ideas, but there's no follow through or good execution on his part. And I just, I really think it's time to let Brayden go. I'm sorry. I, I love their friendship. He lasted longer than I thought he would, but I just don't think Brayden needs to be here any longer. That's just me. Let me know in the comment section what you think about it. So in the midst of all of this, um, <laughs> so Brayden go missing. After you try to tell Tariq what happened, all right? So they go back to the hotel. She tell him that somebody took him. So he called him on the phone and he was like, why he not answering the phone? Effie was like, bruh, because I just said he got taken. And I was like, now, 
Now, Tariq. <laughs> I had to pause it because I was just like, why did she ask that question? Like, you speak several languages. There's no reason that you should have asked that question. Like, it really don't even make sense, okay? Even Eddie was looking like, are you dumb? Like, it just didn't make sense. Then Kiki come knocking on their door talking about, have you seen Brayden? And then they were like, he's still at the party. And she's like, that was over an hour. Y'all been home for an hour. And then Effie was like, I'm sorry. I'll be sure to let Brayden know when we're actually in working business hours. Like, girl, like, what? It's late. Get away from my door. Go figure out where Brayden is on your own time. So after that, that's when Tariq comes up with the story to use the bug in order to lure Francesco out. And so they come up with this plan. And I was just like, so you're going to go against Noma after she told you that nobody was supposed to know about the bug. But we see that after they get Brayden, the dude pulls a gun on him and then they end up getting shot. And so Noma was in on this plan the entire time. And because of how all of this went, she ended up letting them off of their trial period, which was very upsetting to like her little butler. And I know he's not her butler, but he like her butler. But we see that Effie has this conversation with Tariq at the end. And this whole thing sent me. So Effie was like, yo, I found a picture of her with Francesco. She said Francesco was her ex. And, you know, they were like, she has a daughter. And so we can use this as leverage. And, and Tariq was like, Effie, she just killed her daughter's father. Like, he was like, this bitch is crazy. Like, what do you mean? Like, do you know what you have to do to kill your child's father? Like, you were making a connection? I said, now, Orphan Annie, now you know better. I know you might not grow up with family, but, like, you had to have known that someone's willing to kill their child's father that they mean business. That didn't even make sense. They were both doing some stuff that just didn't make sense to me, okay? But we see, after they go back, they in bed. He gets a text message from a number. He goes and meets them, and it's Lauren. Lauren got this hoodie on with this box cutter. I said, baby, what you gonna do with this box cutter and Tariq, okay? So he ends up telling Tariq, like, I know you tried to kill me. And he's like, girl, what are you talking about? I thought you was dead. Like, I love you, girl. And so she was like, no, you told Brayden to give her, give me the Effie so she didn't kill me. And he was like, mm, come again? I don't know about none of this. Like, I really thought she was dead. I didn't have nothing to do with it. So she tells him that the feds are building a case against him. And that's not the only people that he needs to be worried about at this point. So when he goes back into the room, Effie was like, there's something I need to tell you. I was like, oh, she's going to tell the truth. And then she's like, I love you too. Because he said, I love you at the, you know, the woman I love at the table when they were having their like dinner before it was interrupted by Noma. So she still chose to lie to him. So I don't know what's going to happen now that Tariq knows about Brayden and Effie lying to him. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen. I'm really happy they didn't let this play out for too long. Like, I'm happy that we're finally getting people to give these revelations because we see what happens to the revelation Lauren gives to Tariq and the revelation that Lorenzo gives to Monet. While we're on the subject, let's talk about Monet. So... Monet is still being questioned by Nancy Drew, a.k.a. Jenny, as Davis called her. They're investigating Monet's house because of Whitman being shot, and so she just keeps asking questions. Jenny's outfit was cute in that season. Her hair and her outfit was real cute. I gotta give props where props are due. So Davis told Monet to be careful about her next set of moves because, you know, we don't know who's watching you at this point, and you need to make sure that all of your family's alibis check out in case we have to go to court. So he asked her, like, do you still want me to look into, like, the whole thing with Lorenzo? And she was like, no, I'm good. It was just, I was bugging, which we know that she's still thinking about this. Now, what I thought what was crazy is um, we see that Monet ends up asking, um, she asked Kane, like, who told you about IG killing Zeke? And he was like, it was Lorenzo. She was like, bitch, why would you trust him? And she was, he was like, girl, that's my daddy. You ain't like, I just said some random dude off the street. That's my daddy. You think I'm gonna think my daddy gonna lie to me? So even though he did realize his daddy was lying to him. So she ends up going to see Frank's wife, Evelyn. And she basically snitches on Lorenzo, which I was like, wow, like you just being very blatant about this. She snitched on Lorenzo, told her that uh, he was the one who caught the hit on Frank. And that's how he went missing. And so then she was just like, girl, I know you're calculated. So why are you telling me this now? Like, and she was just like, I'm not even going to fall for this. Because at the end of the day, like, it's random that you're just randomly telling me this years later. But also, too, I don't want to put my sons, you know, in a war because of them trying to get vengeance for their father. Like, I care more about my sons than actually getting revenge. 
So we see clearly she's just trying to like egg on Evelyn to get Evelyn to like send somebody to go kill Lorenzo. So she tells Evelyn, like, don't tell anyone that we met. And she was like, oh, okay, can I trust you on that? She was like, yeah, just as much as I can trust you. I was like, I don't know if that was really a sign of good faith. But yeah. <clears throat> so we see that um, Gordo ends up having this conversation with Monet. And, you know, he she told him, like, be careful with my son. But they have this conversation about grief. Because Monet's grieving, so she's asking these people who have lost people close to them like she has. How did they get through it? <clears throat> and so she has a conversation with Gordo where she asks him, like, does it get better? Like, do you, will I not be angry so much? Will I hurt less? And he was just like, well, anger? Like, whoever, as soon as I find out who killed my daddy, I'm slitting their throats. So, of course, I was like, she clearly going to tell Gordo. So Gordo will go kill Lorenzo since Evelyn didn't take the bait. So we see that... Um, Lorenzo goes to like try to grab Monet while she was washing dishes. I was actually very shocked that Monet was washing dishes. Like she just didn't strike me as somebody who would be washing dishes. But yeah. So when she backed up and looked at him, like, why are you touching me? And Lorenzo was like, bro, like what's going on? And so then he ends up telling her the truth about what happened. And I was shocked that all she did was hit him. She was like, out of respect for my kids, I'm not going to give you the bullet that you deserve, but get your ish and get up out of my house and get the hell up out of New York, okay? I don't want to see you no more. I don't love you. Love don't live here no more, all right? So when he said, like, this is on you as much as it's on me, I was like, Lorenzo, I don't feel like you're choosing your words wisely. And then when he tried to ask for forgiveness at the same time, I was like, I mean, baby, baby, baby. I don't think you going about this the right way. Like, you literally just told her that she killed your son and then you let her go on for months thinking it was somebody else. You let her murder somebody else. Like, it's just a lot, okay? It's a lot, Lorenzo, for you to be unpacking right now and you saying you can forgive me. Like, what about our kids? What about our family? What about our love? I was just like, this is not the time, Lorenzo. It's not the time. I'm, I'm shocked she didn't shoot him right then and there. So, she ends up... Um, we see that Lorenzo ends up having a nail in his tire when he's coming out because they're supposed to be telling the kids together that they're breaking up. And we see that he's in the trunk. Somebody slits his throat. I thought it was really Chef's kiss and it was really great how he died in front of Zeke's, um, Zeke's mural, kind of like looking up like this, like the person that you killed is the last face that you're going to see uh, outside of Gordo, you know, basically telling him like die, bleed out. Um, and he sends... Monet text and basically telling her that it's done and thank you for letting me know. So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen when the kids and especially Diana finds out what was going on because um, she had just had that whole conversation with her dad about how she gets sad about how her brothers have memories with him but because when she she was around he was in jail she kind of just feels like she doesn't get to have that same like walk down memory lane which I understand as somebody who lost my I lost my dad at five and all of my brothers, like, they have all these memories with my dad that I don't because he died when I was a little kid. So I really connected to that scene. I really love that scene and him telling her that he's going to get her out of the business and she's not going to have to do anything anymore. She can just focus on school. But I don't know what the hell is going to happen now. I was just happy she was invited to dinner this week, all right? Because, you know, she hadn't been allowed in the house this whole time. So I'm very interested to see what's going to happen when the kids find out what happened. What's going to happen when Drew finds out it was Gordo that killed his dad? When when Brayden and Effie find out that Tariq knows that what they tried to do to Lauren. It's a lot that's happening. I'm really happy, happy that they did this. I felt like the episode should have been called No More Secrets. But I really like where they're going with this. I can't wait to see what's going to happen next week's episode. But I'm happy that we are not wasting any time. We're just getting this stuff going. Like bombshell after bombshell. I'm totally here for this. I'm loving this season so far. So I thought this is a pretty great episode. It's probably my favorite episode. I like when secrets are revealed. It's going to move the plot forward even more. So let me know in the comment section. What did you think about this week's episode? Are you excited about it? What did you love? What did you hate? Like, what do you predict is going to happen now that all these revelations have been revealed? Let me know in the comment section below. But those are my thoughts on Power Book 2 Ghost. Season 3, Episode 5, No Second Chances. As always, my name is Sharonda from Pair Ways. And if you like what you saw today, make sure you hit the like button, hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, and make sure you hit that notification bell. And I love you guys 3,000. And until I see you again, bye.